Hello, I'm Dr. Lauren Stryker. When we're under stress, we often say our blood pressure is climbing through the roof. And it's true. Stress and activity do temporarily increase blood pressure. That's normal, and it's usually nothing to be worried about. But when you have hypertension, your pressure is consistently high, even when you're at rest. Everyone needs some blood pressure. Without it, blood couldn't move through our bodies, bringing much needed oxygen to our organs and muscles, and then carrying away carbon dioxide and other waste. The system of vessels that carries blood through the human body is over 60,000 miles long. That's long enough to go around the world more than twice. So how does blood travel all that distance? It starts with the heart. About 80 times a minute, blood is pumped into and out of the heart muscle. Blood flows into arteries branching out from the heart. From there, blood flows into smaller arteries called arterioles. Blood makes its trip throughout the body and then into veins where it returns to the heart. To put the cycle in perspective, an adult heart pumps about five quarts of blood a minute or 2,000 gallons a day throughout the body. The arterioles act as the gatekeepers of blood flow. When they open, blood flows through freely and exerts very little pressure on vessel walls. But when these vessels are constricted, that's where the trouble can start. If your heart is pumping extra hard to move blood through the body, over time, this can take a toll on your arteries. Normally, arteries are rubbery and will flex with each beat of the heart as blood moves through. The smooth inner walls of the arteries allow blood to flow freely. But if the arteries must stretch as the heart pumps blood through them more forcefully, the inner walls can develop tiny grooves of microscopic scar tissue. Cholesterol and other deposits can get trapped in these grooves, creating atherosclerotic plaque. If this plaque grows, the arteries can become stiffer and narrower. It's a vicious cycle. The more rigid your arteries, the harder your heart has to pump. The harder your heart pumps, the more damage is done to the inner walls of your arteries. It's important to know that the heart doesn't always pump the same amount of blood at the same rate. Vessels don't always just stay open or closed. Maintaining normal blood pressure is a bit of a balancing act. Most of the job falls to a portion of the nervous system and to the kidneys. Do you know that fight or flight feeling we get when we feel threatened? It's actually the nervous system stimulating the release of hormones to make our heart beat faster and our arterioles dilate and constrict so blood can quickly go to where it's needed, like to our muscles. It's a temporary increase in blood pressure in response to a physiological need. Whenever blood pressure changes, the kidneys respond to help bring it back to normal. If the pressure goes up, the kidneys excrete more salt and water, which is eliminated through urine to help blood volume go down. Should blood pressure drop, the kidneys excrete less salt and water to help blood volume increase, restoring normalcy. In essence, the body keeps blood pressure normal by compensating for changes in blood flow and volume. But with hypertension, these control mechanisms fail, and we don't exactly know why. If you've been diagnosed with primary hypertension, you're among 85 to 90 percent of all cases where the cause is unknown. Changes take place in the heart that cause it to pump larger amounts of blood, and in the vessels that cause them to constrict. Pressure builds, but doesn't drop back down. Heredity plays a role. So can diet, especially in people who are salt sensitive or have a family history of high blood pressure. Lifestyle, age, race, and gender all play roles too. Hypertension is twice as common in people who are obese. It's more common in African American adults and in people over the age of 75. Across the board, blood pressure can be affected by smoking, lack of exercise, stress, and excessive alcohol and salt. Since most people don't have symptoms, the only way to know you have hypertension is to have your blood pressure checked. Now that you know how hypertension affects the body, you'll want to watch our segments in the chapter, How Do I Control It?, to learn about the three key things you can do to help keep your blood pressure down. Thanks for watching.